Intermolecular forces, or IMFs, are incredibly important in biomolecules. In this particular video, we're going to focus on intermolecular forces that are important in polysaccharides, or polymers of sugars. There are many different sugar monomers that make up polymers. We are going to focus in this video on glucose as a monomer that will form um, sugar polymers. Glucose is um, a hexose, so it's a six carbon sugar. The structure is shown here. Um, glucose can be either a D sugar or an L sugar, which refers to the chirality at this center, which is the chiral center furthest away from the oxidized carbon. We're going to focus on D glucose. Glucose can exist in this linear form. It can also exist cyclized either as an alpha glucose or a beta glucose. What happens when glucose cyclizes is that this oxygen does a nucleophilic attack on this carbonyl carbon at carbon one. And since that carbon is sp2 hybridized and it's flat, that nucleophilic attack can happen from the top face or the bottom face. And that generates two different uh, configurations in the new molecule that's formed. So if we look at C1, this is the anomeric carbon and you can have the OH group be down. In this case, this is alpha glucose, or you, at C1, you can have the OH group be up, in which case it's beta glucose. As we start to talk about polymers of glucose, we're gonna see that carbon one, which is shown here, carbon four, which is here, and carbon six, which is here are going to be the ones that are important as glucose polymerizes. Um, and if we look at glucose and we start to think about what type of intermolecular forces might be important, there's a ton of oxygen in OH groups. And so it's going to be hydrogen bonding that's going to be the predominant force important as glucose starts to uh, both polymerize and those polymers start to stack on top of each other. I'm focusing here on glucose because it is an important molecule. Um, it's an important monomer, both in terms of energy as well as being used structurally. And so as an energy molecule, it's going to be important that uh, it's able to be stored. Um, when the energy level of a cell is high, it's also going to be important that it's able to be broken down when the energy level of a cell is low so that it can be used to form ATP. And as a structural molecule, it's going to be important that it's strong. So I'm going to talk about two different types of glucose polymers. I'm going to talk about storage polymers of glucose, and I'm going to talk about structural polymers of glucose. So I'm going to talk about storage polymers of glucose first. So plants and animals store glucose in different ways. Plants store glucose in starch. Starch is stored in the chloroplast of cells. And it's a mixture of two different types of homopolymers of glucose. One is amylose and one is amylopectin. Animals, on the other hand, store glucose as glycogen. Um, and I'll uh, show you the difference in the structures between glycogen, amylopectin, and amylose. And animals store glycogen primarily in the liver and the muscle cells. So if we first start with plants and we look at amylose, the structure of amylose is shown here. It's a linear chain of glucose molecules. And these glucose molecules are always linked in the same way. They're linked so that carbon one, which is the anomeric carbon of one glucose molecule, is linked to carbon four of another glucose molecule. And this anomeric carbon has the OH in the alpha position. So because it does, we call this an alpha-1-4 glycosidic linkage. And amylose is made of long chains of these alpha-1-4 linked glucose residues. As all of those glucose residues are linked together, um, what's shown over here on the right is that amylose forms um, a structure that is helical in nature. Um, and on average, there's about eight glucose residues per turn. So this is quite a bit looser than, for example, a turn in an alpha helix of a protein. 
Um, and if you look at that helix, there are hydrogen bonds between glucose residues that are in a particular helix. Okay. If we look at amylopectin, which is the other um, glucose storage molecule for plants, it's similar to amylose in that it has um, alpha 1, 4 linked glucose residues. Um, but in addition to these alpha 1, 4 linked glucose residues, about every 25th glucose molecule, there's an alpha 1, 6 linked glucose residue. And so what happens is as these uh, monomeric glucose units get added to amylopectin, amylopectin has a helical structure that's a little bit different than amylose. You can see it's still got the main helical structure, but it's got these branch points. And these branch points make it quite a bit bulkier um, than amylose. And so again, if you look at individual, the individual helix, there is gonna be hydrogen bonding between uh, individual glucose monomers in that helix. Those of you that like to cook uh, know that you use starch quite frequently as a thickening agent. Well, it's interesting because for starch to be a thickening agent, it's got to form um, a three-dimensional gel. And if you look at amylose without those branch points, it forms a really nice three-dimensional gel, a tight, strong three-dimensional gel because of all of the hydrogen bonding that can happen between glucose residues on one helix with glucose residues on another helix and glucose residues on another helix. Amylopectin, on the other hand, while it will form a three-dimensional gel, doesn't form a three-dimensional gel that's as strong because these bushy branch points get in the way of forming a really thick three-dimensional gel. And so if you're using a starch from a plant that has more amylopectin than, than uh, another um, starch, from an, starch from another plant, you may find that um, the thickening capacity um, of your starches are really different. Okay, so that's plants. Animals um, store glucose as glycogen, as I said before. Um, glycogen is really similar to amylopectin. It has the alpha-1,4 linked glucose residues. It also has these alpha-1,6 um, branch points um, of glucose residues. But the difference between glycogen and amylopectin is that for amylopectin, these alpha-1,6 linked branch points happen about every 25th glucose residue. Um, and for animals and glycogen, they happen about once every 10 residues. Um, and so again, glycogen forms a helix that looks like amylopectin that's very uh, bushy, um, and it's more bushy because the branch points are closer together. So for both plants and animals, glucose is stored in this way, and there are uh, protein enzymes that can break down um, these polymers when the plants or animals need energy. And then those glucose uh, monomers can be used um, to form ATP that a cell needs. Okay, the second type of glucose homopolymer that I wanna talk about um, are structural polysaccharides. And as the name implies, a structural polysaccharide, the purpose of a structural poly polysaccharide is to be strong. Um, and so cellulose is one example of a uh, glucose homopolymer that is um, a polysaccharide. Um, it is the major component of wood and plant fibers um, and its purpose is to be strong. And so if you look at this glucose homopolymer, it is uh, also linked in an out, it is also linked in a one four fashion but instead of being alpha 1,4 linked, this is now beta configuration at carbon one that's linked to, uh, to carbon four. And so in this way, the geometry of these beta 1,4 linkages is really different from the alpha 1,4 linkages. They're not forming the helical structure that the alpha 1,4 linkage, linkages formed um, in cellulose, uh, sorry, in, in amylose and in amylopectin and in glycogen, they're forming long flat sheets. And these long flat sheets stack on top of each other in really efficient ways. And so as is shown uh, over on the right here, 
um, th these are three um, individual strands of, of uh, glucose beta 1,4 linked polymers that are stacked together um, in cellulose. And so there's, in, there's, uh, there's IMFs, there's hydrogen bonded IMFs between glucose um, monomers that are in a particular chain. There's also hydrogen bonding between glucose monomers between the individual chains, which hold these cellulose um, uh, fibers together uh, and increase the strength that, that, that they have. So if we're gonna talk about polysaccharides of glucose, we can talk about structural polysaccharides and storage polysaccharides. Um, they are going to be different based on what their functions need to be and based on the structure of how they're put together, how they're linked. Um, but what's gonna be true in all cases is that the intermolecular interaction that's gonna be important between these polysaccharides is gonna be hydrogen bonding.